Hi everybody. So in this lesson, I want to look at the remainder and factor theorems. Um, I've given them here in red and I've kind of simplified them as much as possible. The remainder theorem is if a polynomial P of X is divided by AX minus B, so it's divided by a linear factor, the remainder is P of B over A. And then the factor theorem is basically just a version of the remainder theorem where the remainder is zero. So it's like it's if AX minus B is a factor, of a polynomial p of x, then p of b over a, which would be this, equals zero. Now, that probably doesn't make a whole lot of sense yet, but once I explain this, hopefully it will. So, first example, I'm gonna do a remainder theorem example where I explain the kind of theory behind it. I'll do a factor theorem example, and then I'm gonna do a past paper example. So, this um, polynomial, this cubic, I have taken from the previous lesson and we've actually divided this by x minus 3 and we actually got let me bring out the answer here oh that was, that was quick um let's do this okay so when we divided x cubed plus x squared minus 7 by x minus 3 we got x squared plus 4x plus 12 plus 29 over x minus 3. And we said the remainder was 29. Now, before I even do the the division, so say it says, if it just says, find the remainder when p of x is divided by x minus 3. So, and this is actually quite a nice question in an exam, usually, instead of me having to go through that long division thing, that's kind of annoying and time consuming, I'm going to show you a much easier way using the remainder theorem. So, and you, and you don't even have to do this, write this out. This is, I want to show you the why it works. This is the kind of theory behind it. So when I divide x cubed plus x squared minus 7 by x minus 3, I get, because I'm it's a cubic divided by a linear function, I have to get a quadratic. Now, if it's a factor, it'll just be that quadratic on its own. And if it's not a factor, it'll be the quadratic with the remainder. So that what that means is that x cubed plus x squared minus 7 equals this, this uh, quadratic, multiplied by x minus 3 plus the remainder. That's if I multiply across by x minus 3. This is just what division is. If I, let's say I do, let's say I said 20 divided by 6 equals 3 plus 2 over 6, 3 with my remainder 2 over 6. That's like saying 20 is equal to 18 plus 2. 18, or, yeah, 18 with a remainder of 2, or 3 plus 2 over 6. Okay, so same kind of thing here. Now, look what happens. If I actually, so here's p of x, p of x is equal to x cubed plus x squared minus 7. Now, if I, instead of doing any of this, so literally the, the answer to this, find the remainder when p of x is divided by x minus 3, all I need to do is write down p of 3. I need to find p of 3. Because what happens is, when I find p of 3, this, remember, this is p of x, this is p of x and it equals this and it equals this plus the remainder. But if I put 3 into this, whatever, I'm going to put it in here. If I put it in here, what happens is whatever whatever's going on in this quadratic, the 3 minus 3 becomes 0 and you're left with the remainder. So p of 3 is going to give me the remainder and it's 3 cubed plus 3 squared minus 7 which is, guess what, 27 plus 9 is 36, minus 7 is 29, and that's what I wanted. So, when you are asked to find the remainder, when p of x is divided by x minus 3, you just find p of 3. And that is the, here it says, the remainder is p of b over a. So the, re, the look, if you were, say we divided by, Instead of dividing by x minus 3, imagine I divided by 2x minus 5. Well, 
what I need to put in to this to make it equal to zero, to make this times this equal zero, would be five over two. So I would get P of five over two. It's like P of three over one, if you like. Anyway, let me get rid of this because it's getting a little bit too messy. Okay, so that's the remainder theorem. You can find the remainder by just subbing in, um, subbing in B over A when it is in the form A, when the divisor is in the form AX minus B. Okay, that's the first example. Now again, I made that way more complicated than it is just to kind of show you why it all makes sense. The truth is, this is all you needed to do. And that's all I'm going to do for this. Show x minus 2 is a factor of x cubed minus 7x squared plus 16x minus 12. Now again, you could do long division and hopefully you'd get a nice quadratic. But if I actually just do, if I just do, um, let's do p of 2, or let's just stick with f. Let's go f of 2. If I sub, I could technically say let let f of x equal this thing. So find f of 2. If f of 2 equals 0, 2 cubed minus 7 times 2 squared plus 16 times 2 minus 12 equals 8 minus 2 squared is 4 times 7 is 28 plus 32 minus 12 equals, what have we got here? 8 plus 32 is 40, negative 28 minus 12 is 40, this equals 0. So, um, as f of 2 equals 0, I'm just going to write a conclusion, as f of 2 equals 0, x minus 2 is uh, factor. Done. Easy. Okay, last question, last but not least, is uh, this is straight from a past paper. It says, the polynomial this has a factor x plus 2 and leaves a remainder 4 when divided by x plus 1. Find the values p and q. Now, I did, I told you, this was a nice question. Once you once you get the hang of it, you will see that it is a nice question. Um, the polynomial, this has a factor x plus 2. So that means f of negative 2 equals 0 because of the factor theorem. If, the, if it has a factor of x plus 2, then f minus 2 must equal 0. Let's sub that in. f minus 2 equals 3 times negative 2 cubed plus p times negative 2 squared plus q times negative 2 minus 2 equals 8 negative 8 negative 24 plus 4p minus 2q minus 2 and I'll simplify that to 4p minus 2q 4p minus 2q minus 26 and this equals 0 this equals 0 so I can divide by 2 2 P minus Q minus 13 equals 0 first equation so immediately I kind of recognize this this question as there's two variables that I need to find and they're giving me two bits of information so that with those two bits of information I will be able to make my I will be able to make my um, two equations, simultaneous equations, and I can just solve them. And th so then it says, leaves a remainder 4 when divided by x minus 1. So f, f of negative 1 is equal to 4, because that's the remainder theorem. If I sub in negative 1, it gives me the remainder. So f of negative 1, f of negative 1 is equal to 3 times negative 1 cubed plus p times negative 1 squared plus q times negative 1 minus 2. Negative 3, so that's, that's negative 1 cubed is negative 1 times 3 is negative 3 plus p minus q minus 2 and this 
equals four. So let me just come down here a bit. I'm going to say, I am going to say minus, oh, well, it's negative five. So it's P, P minus Q minus five equals, well, it equals four because it equals four here. So P minus Q minus nine equals zero. Now I have two equations with two unknowns. I actually don't remember if this was paper one or paper two. If it was paper two, I just sub that straight into the calculator because it's, um, well, I'll just do it without a calculator because I don't know. So it's 2p minus q minus 13 equals zero. p minus q minus nine equals zero. I am going to subtract these. 2p minus p is p. These cancel. Negative 13. Negative 13 plus 9 will be minus 4 equals 0. Therefore, p equals 4. And then sub, um, sub 4 into p here. So it's going to be 4 minus 4 minus q minus 9 equals zero, q equals negative five. So there's my two answers. P is P equals four and Q equals negative five. All those P's and Q's and nines confuse me there, but yeah, that's it. So actually not, not a totally simple question, but the, the factor theorem and the remainder theorem is pretty straightforward. You just sub in, if you, if you have, if you know x plus two is a factor, then f of negative two equals zero. And if you know uh, x plus four, uh, sorry, x plus one leaves the remainder four, then f of negative one equals four and go from there.